Hello and welcome to our USMLE Step 1 prep series. Today we are joined by one of our USMLE counselors, Dr. Devon Kinchlow. Um, before we dive in, I want to let you guys know this video is brought to you by St. James School of Medicine, where your future is our promise. If you want more study resources, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below with what you want to see next. And without further ado, I'm going to let Dr. Kinchlow take the driver's seat and break down last week's question that we posed on our social media about standard deviation. Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction, Aysen. Um, so this week we will be discussing standard deviation. Um, so the three counselors, myself, Dr. Heckburn and Dr. Chowdhury, um, if you need to contact any of us, if you have questions, comments, feedback, um, on top of this video, you can also send an email to usmle at mail.sjsm.org. So without further ado, let's get into this week's question. So as you guys saw on social media, the question that was asked is a randomized clinical trial investigating the efficacy of a new oral iron replacement therapy in iron deficient anemia patients was conducted with 300 female participants. There were two groups, one receiving a placebo with the current gold standard oral treatment for iron deficiency anemia and the other group receiving the new oral iron replacement therapy. All participants remained in the study for the one month duration, at which time average serum iron levels were 110 micrograms per deciliter, and the standard deviation was 15 micrograms per deciliter. Based on this randomized clinical trial, approximately how many participants will have an iron level above 140 micrograms per deciliter? Choice A, 7, choice B, 10, choice C, 15 choice D, 48, or choice E, 50. So give a second for people to lock in their answers, think about a little bit of the math. Yeah, social um, media had such a range of answers too, so I don't want to yeah. give it away. <laughs> I know the, uh, the biostatistics questions or any question that involves math usually tends to be the struggle of a lot of medical students. Um, all of the information in our brains is focused on like pathologies, physiology, pharmacology. So like the math equations formulas become a little bit uh, bogged down by all the other information. <laughs> so hopefully people have their answers in their mind right now. Um, but let's talk a little bit about standard deviation to just kind of help go through this. So standard deviation is the measure of variability in a set of values around the mean. So the mean is going to be the average, which can be represented by mu. Um, so in this case, our mean was 110. So if we look right at the center of the bell curve, so for those of you who are joining via audio, uh, bell curve is going to look kind of like a bell. So you start down, you go up to a peak, which is going to be your mean, and then you go down. So it's going to be equal on both sides. So that's what we're looking at with standard deviation and a mean represented around, um, or a set of values around that mean. So the standard deviation can be recognized can be uh, shown as sigma, which is in this case, 15 micrograms per deciliter. So you have 68% of your um, values will be within one standard deviation. So using the numbers in this equation, that would be between 125 and 95. And you'd have 95% is within two standard deviations. So 95% of patients would fall between the values of 80 and 140. And then three standard deviations is going to be 99.7%. Um, so three deviations would be plus or minus 45 from 110. That's a little more math than I can do in my head. <laughs> so in this question, they wanted to know how many would be above 140. So 140 we know is two standard deviations above the mean. So we know that in two standard deviations, you have 95% are going to be within two standard deviations. So our question is asking how many will be above 140. So that's outside of the standard deviation, but outside on only one side. So greater than, not greater than or less than. 
So if we take our two standard deviations, we get that 140, and then we have to know that 95% falls within two standard deviations. So that means two or 5% is outside of the standard deviation on both sides. So if we subtract that in half, because we only want greater than 140, that's going to be 2.5% of patients should be above um, that 140 cutoff. So um, just to kind of same thing as what I was just kind of saying, this is kind of the stepwise method I take to look at standard deviation. So the first thing you have to look at is your mean and your standard deviation, which we know our mean was 110 and our standard deviation was 15. The next, we're gonna look at what are they specifically asking in the question? So usually they will ask, you know, above one standard deviation or outside of one or two standard deviations. So in our case, it was above 140, so above two standard deviations. The third step is to determine if it's one tail or two tail. So if it's two tail, it's just everybody outside could be above a certain value or below a certain value. Whereas if it's one tail, you're only talking about above a certain value or less than a certain value. So that's important because like I said, there was 5% outside of the standard deviation, but each half is on one side. So 2.5 is above two standard deviations and 2.5 is below standard deviations. So if it's a one tail, you have to use that 2.5%, whereas if it's two tail, you're gonna use the full 5%. And that is the fourth point. So apply your standard deviation numbers. So based off of the number referenced in the question, and you know it's one tail or two tail, you know how much is either within or outside of those standard deviations. And then you use you know, the percentages available for you. So in our case, we have the 2.5% outside. And then if we plug and chug our numbers, we know there were 300 patients in the study, 300 times 2.5% will give us about 7.5 patients. Obviously you can't have half a patient. So in our case, the answer would be seven. So just to go back through again, just to look at the stepwise process. So this is just looking at the specific standard deviation question in going through it using the stepwise approach. So our mean 110, standard deviation 15, the number in the question was iron level of 140 or higher. So we know it's one tail because it's above 140 and we're not talking about two standard deviations below. So we know 95% fall within, cut that in half because you're only looking at the above the mean side. So that's 2.5%. So we know 2.5% of the total patients in the study will have an iron level above 140. And then the last step, plug and check your numbers. How many patients did you have in the study? Multiply that by your percentage. And that's how many patients would have uh, those values in the specific study. So really it's this stepwise approach to standard deviation questions that'll help you just get through all of them. Um, I like to do it stepwise because it's easier than memorizing formulas or going about it that way. If you just kind of have a stepwise approach, it'll help you kind of tackle all those types of questions instead of having to memorize a formula and then potentially forgetting as you're studying other more high yield topics. And that is everything for this week. So hopefully that kind of helped you guys out with some standard deviation questions. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can reach out to any of us counselors at usmle at mail.sjsm.org. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Kinchlow. And word on the street is this is your last episode with us. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately for you guys, and very fortunately for me, <laughs> I did match into emergency medicine. So I will actually be leaving my counselor position here very shortly to move to New York and start getting ready for residency. So this will unfortunately be my last Aww. of these podcasts yeah. slash YouTube well, videos. It's very bittersweet. We will miss you so much, but we're so happy that you matched. Um, I think was ER like your top choice? Yep, it was my only choice. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh my so. God, so that's awesome for you, but yeah. we will miss you. Thank you so much for being with us and kind of helping us through all these different USMLE prep questions. Um, and yeah. 
Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. I will miss you guys and all of your following as well. <laughs> Hopefully uh, you all will become successful and I will see some of you guys as potential colleagues or even might be calling you guys at one point to send you some patients. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and comment below what you want to see next. And also comment some best wishes for Dr. Kinchlow. All right. Take care. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.